There are several ways you can create with a poppy dye, and these apply to all my other floral dyes with spellbinders, the peony, the anemone, the magnolia, and the poinsettia. Hi everyone, I'm Yana Smakula. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. First, let's look at the dye itself. Like all my other floral dyes with spellbinders, this dye has two pieces. There is an outer dye. This one casts a shadow for your flower. I like to cut it from vellum to give my die cut that airy look, but I've also seen this cut from colored cardstock and not just white cardstock, but also black for a lot of contrast. This die basically creates a backer for the flower. You can choose to use it with your flower or skip using it. It is optional. The second is the actual flower die. This die will cut the flower outline and the flower petals. It is one die that cuts both elements, and this is also the die you'll end up using the most and cutting the most. While these two dies come together and nest together, you don't want to cut them together, as this will give you a weird outline. These aren't intended to be cut like that, so just cut one die, then cut another die, and layer your die cuts. Don't cut two dies together into one piece of cardstock. Don't do that. So now that we've seen the dyes, let's look at the different ways and different techniques they can be used. First, you can die cut these from white cardstock or colored cardstock to create the flower petals. The outline can be cut from any color or type of paper you want. I typically reach for mere gold cardstock for the outline or white cardstock that also gives a nice look. If you die cut the petals from white cardstock, you have several options to add color. You can first add ink blending. This is easier and faster, and you can be very basic with your ink blending, or you know, use smaller blending brushes and create beautiful blended looks and even employ masking. You can also use coloring mediums and color the petals one by one as if you are coloring a steamed image. If you decide to die cut petals from colored cardstock, you again have several options. First, you can leave the paper as is to have a solid layer of cardstock without any shading. I like this when I'm doing inlay die cutting and I also mix the different colors of cardstock for the different petals to create modern looking flowers. Or again, you can add ink blending to colored cardstock by using darker ink to create shading on your petals. So I would say this is a coloring die. You can die cut, and then you can decide how you want to apply the color to make this flower come to life. Depending how thick the cardstock is, you might find that the individual petals do not want to stay in place and fall out. In this case, I simply add tape from the back. Here I have Spellwinder's Best Ever Craft Tape, and that just helps to hold the pieces together. This was cut from Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock. I also die cut the outline from gold cardstock. This is the Spellbinders Mirror Gold. And I use Barely Art Glue to adhere the two layers together. If you want, you can use double sided adhesive sheets behind the Mirror Gold paper and cut the Mirror Gold paper with the adhesive behind it. Although you might find it a little bit difficult to cut it since this is such a detailed die. So just give it a try and see if that works for you. Now, I also like to cut the shadow piece from vellum, and when I layer everything together, I get the most beautiful, airy-looking flower. Here I have a couple of flowers that I've already made just to show you different examples. So this first flower I die cut from Simon Says Stamp 130-pound cardstock, and I colored it using Copic markers. I added the gold outline and the vellum shadow piece. You can see the yellow tape on the back holding the petals together because they were falling apart or falling out. I used Copic markers and the flick style coloring method to do this type of coloring, and I have a video segment showing how to do that. Now, this next flower was cut from colored cardstock. Again, there is a gold outline added to it, and I added ink blending. You can see as I flip the flower to the back that it's just colored cardstock, but with a little bit of ink blending, you can create beautiful shading and really bring your petals to life. Now this next flower is slightly different. Again, I have the colored cardstock for the petals. This is pink sand from Spellbinders and then some ink blending added to it. And I have a white outline. 
I also used a Copic marker and I colored the white outline. Uh, I added green to the leaves and also green to the stems of the flowers. And I think that looks very beautiful. So you can also do that if you'd like to have the green leaves for your flower. That's the way to go about it. This next flower was done using ink blending. I die cut this from Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock and just ink blended red ink onto the petals, added the gold outline and the vellum shadow piece. Here I was a little bit more specific with my ink blending and I used masking when blending the separate petals just to have a little bit more definition. And again, I'll show you that a little later in this video. So there's a lot you can do with this flower dye, a lot you can, a lot of different ways you can add color to this depending on your favorite way and your favorite coloring medium. And I encourage you to give this flower a try and color it. Okay, let's go ahead and add some color to this die cut. So here I have my poppy die cut from Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock. I have Pink Fresh Studio Candy Apple ink and I have a small blending brush from Simon Sestium. I also have some die cuts. This, these are leftover from a gold outline that I die cut to finish this flower. I did not throw them away. Instead, I kept them and I'm going to use them as masks. Now, this is a little bit tricky because I will be holding each piece down using my fingers. So this is not probably the most efficient, the most you know, the, the smartest way to do this, but it is certainly one of the ways. If you want to do this, you can, you know, create masks from masking paper, or you can use, um, you know, one of those sticky mats, pop the petal out, put it onto the sticky mat, and just ink blend from one side of the petal. This way you won't have to do any masking, and it will just be a little bit easier. I kind of enjoyed doing it this way. The petals aren't too small on this flower, so I was okay doing the masking technique. The gold paper is uh, slippery, so it actually provides a very good masking surface when I'm ink blending because the ink just slides off of the paper onto my white cardstock. Sometimes I am adding several masks and holding several masks with my fingers to make sure that I'm protecting several petals at once, but I kind of feel like it, it is all worth it in the end because I get this beautiful ink blended flower. I am blending with red ink, but poppies come in many different colors. Do not be fooled that you can only do a red poppy. If you need some inspiration, I encourage you to go to Pinterest and just type poppy and you'll see all the different beautiful colors of poppies. There are yellow and peach and pink poppies, lots of different colors. So don't be limited to just red encourage you to try other colors. Using ink blending is probably one of the faster ways to color this image. If you decide to use a coloring medium such as alcohol markers, Copic markers or Olo markers or whatever other markers you have in your stash, I find that takes a lot longer to color this as, well, maybe it's just me, but I like to really take my time and work on each petal versus, you know, doing quick ink blending. So if you if you just want to give this uh, dye a quick try, maybe use ink blending. But if you have time and if you enjoy coloring, go ahead and try to color this with your alcohol markers. So with the ink blending done, I then use my Barely Art glue. I have the finest nozzle uh, attached here, finest tip, and I'm adding just a little bit of glue onto that white outline. This will help me adhere that gold outline onto the poppy and finish this beautiful flower. I did forget to color the flower center, and I will do that once the outline adhered, although the, it's best to do that before you add the outline and just color that black, or maybe you want to color that green as well, you can do that. Here I have my shadow piece die cut from Vellum, and again, I'm using glue, just a little bit of glue to add this onto the shadow piece. I'm using magnets to hold the die cut in place while the glue is drying, and now I'm using a Copic marker. This is a C9 to color the flower center black. If you look at poppies in real life, you'll see that the flower center isn't actually black. It's, uh, it's green. And you just have the little stamens around the flower, around the petals that make it look like it's black. Now, I also wanted to share one more trick. If you find that it is a little bit difficult for you to ink blend, especially those little buds it helps to place them back into the paper from which you cut it so the paper will kind of hold it in place and will make the paper a little bit more stable 
and use that um, to ink blend your image. Now, speaking of coloring, here is an example of how you can color this image. Again, I have this die cut from Nina, solar white, 80 pound cardstock, and I'm using my Copic markers to add color. I'm just going to show you one petal, but you take this and you apply it onto all the other petals and you have yourself a beautiful flower. So I first start with my lightest red. This is the R20 and I flick this color onto the petal. I follow the guidelines that I have on my petal. So basically I follow the cut lines and I apply the color using the flicks. So I flick the color onto the petal. Next, I move on to my darker red. This is R22 and now I add additional flicks. This time they are a bit smaller than my R20 flicks. And I'm just bringing the color in from the top and from the bottom. So this creates folds, it creates hills and valleys, so to speak, in our petal. And it just makes it look a little bit more interesting. Next, I have the R24 marker. This is pretty much my darkest color. I will go to one shade darker. And I'm using this to really add the red um, color onto this petal. Again, I'm adding flicks. This time the flicks are even smaller than before and I'm just adding them gently onto my image. And finally, I'm coming in with my darkest color. This is R27 and I'm using this color to create those deep, dark shadows on the petal. Here, I am especially following the cut lines that I have on the petals created by the dye and I'm intensifying those marks. So I'm creating the deepest shadows where I have those marks. And you can see how that pretty much finishes the coloring of this petal. You can also come back to your other colors if you feel like you don't have enough color there. I like to stop, pause, lay down my outline just to, you know, check if I like the way that this petal looks. Right now, I see that I probably should go back to my lightest red and add a little bit more of that as I have a bit too much white here. Now, I mentioned working with colored cardstock, and I love to use colored cardstock for my flower dyes with spellbinders. I love to die cut the flower from different colors of cardstock and use the different colors for different petals. This gives a very modern a very unexpected look. So here's a card that I just finished using colored cardstock from Spellbinders and my poppy. I die cut the poppy from white cardstock, so the outline is cut from white. I also have a shadow cut from vellum, and I have five more poppies cut from different colors, different uh, colors of car colored cardstock from Spellbinders. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a petal from each of those flowers and inlay that petal into my white outline. So this is a bit of a tedious process, although not too tedious because the petals aren't too small. They're, they're nice size, so they are manageable. This gives a very unique look. You won't be able to do this with all flower dyes, all of my flower dyes, because some have very small petals. I think peony has the very the smallest petal, so it might be a little bit too difficult to do this with the peony, but other floral dyes, you can definitely try this technique and try this approach to create colorful flowers. So again, I'm not just limited to red. I am adding orange and yellow to create that unique look. It's very easy to inlay the pieces. They just fit right in place. You know, they fit like puzzle pieces. And once I'm done inlaying the pieces, I add a little bit of tape over them to hold everything down. You can also use press and seal. I have press and seal, but ever since I moved, I can't find mine. So I'm using wide Bastera craft tape instead. It works just as well. It's just a little bit more sticky than press and seal. So I press the tape over my die cut and then I use glue to adhere the pieces onto that outline. With this technique, when you do the inlay die cutting, I say it is important to use the shadow piece so that you have something to adhere your flower to. And I would also say don't use too much glue because the more glue you use, the more your vellum piece is going to warp. I had to switch to a slightly larger nozzle for my Barely Art glue because 
this is not a new bottle and I feel like the glue is not as runny as it used to be before and it kind of hurts my hand to squeeze the bottle too much when I'm using the finest tip. So I switched to the second finest tip and that one lets out quite a bit more glue. And because of that, I have found that my die cut warps a lot because while well, vellum is not really, you know, it doesn't take moisture well and I added a little bit too much glue here so it warped a little bit but it was it was all it was all right in the end just something to keep in mind if you have double-sided adhesive sheets you can use those to die cut these pieces but be careful because again this is a detailed die and depending on your die cutting machine you might have trouble cutting it in your machine I never have any trouble cutting mine in the Spellbinders Platinum machines but I know people who are using older machines or machines from other brands have had issues die cutting this die. I know this because we did the Weekender event with Spellbinders and we had many different participants and some people have commented that they have had trouble die cutting it and they mentioned that they have a non-Spellbinders die cutting machine. So just keep that in mind. If you have a non-Spellbinders die cutting machine, maybe you will need to add a shim to increase pressure to be able to have a successful cut. So here I have my flowers ready. I love how colorful and modern and mod and funky they look. It's, it's quite me. So you can see all the different looks that you can create with this dye. You know, it doesn't have to be that ink beautiful, you know, ink blended. It can be quite modern and funky if you want it to be that way. So I hope you have found this video useful. I hope this gives you some ideas and inspiration and, you know, techniques that you can try with your poppy dye from Spellbinders and all my other floral dyes. Thanks again for joining me today. I appreciate you spending time with me. I love you guys and I hope to see you again soon.